Today you'll learn how to create this animation and others like it using noise displacements in Cinema 4D. Noise displacement is an incredibly powerful tool that can be used to drive a lot of different kinds of animations. So let's just dive in and I'll show you how to create that animation as well as some other use cases afterwards. Loading up a new scene file in Cinema 4D, come over to your object generators and let's drop in a torus. I want this torus to be a little skinnier, so I'm going to bring the ring radius up and the pipe radius down just a little bit. We need to go ahead and add some more detail to this, so I'm going to bring each of the segments areas up to 128. Now with our object in place, we need to do some displacing. Come over to your Modifiers tab and come down to Displacer. We need to drag this inside of our torus so that it's being affected by the displacer and nothing else. We've added a displacer, but you can see that nothing yet is going on in our viewport. That's because we haven't given this displacer anything to really drive off of. So we need to come over to Shading and in the drop-down tab, add a Noise Shader. Now you can start to see something going on. I'm going to click this image to come into my noise shader and bring my global scale way up so you can kind of start to see some of that liquid effect start to come through like you saw in the intro clip. I want mine to be pretty smooth so I'm going to leave it at around 676 or so. There are lots of different kinds of noise so if you want to try to achieve a different kind of look you can move through some of these and see what you like. I'm going to leave mine on noise for now to create this liquid effect. Now we need to animate this, and luckily there's a very easy way to do this by coming over to our animation speed and setting it to whatever you want. I'm going to come over here and play through this to see how this looks now. This is looking good, but I think I want it to go a little slower, so I'm going to take this down to 1. Now we have a very smooth liquid animation. There are other settings down here that will let you adjust different things about the actual noise texture that's being piped into the displacement. Changing the contrast will make this more drastic. Changing your low clip will change the, uh, the blacks and how they're adjusted in the noise texture, as you can see going on in the preview over here. And same with the high clip on the side of the whites. You can really dial this in and create a lot of very stylized looks. But how do we make this draw itself on like you saw in the intro? Well, there's also a pretty easy way to do that. If we come up to our torus, and go to the slice tab, you can check this on. So you can already kind of see where we're going with this now. If we set both the to and from channels to zero, you'll see that we just have this little starting point here. It looks kind of funny with our noise just going inside of it. At the beginning of our clip, if we set a keyframe on our two, and then if we come to the very end and set it to 360 degrees, our torus will have drawn itself on all the way from the beginning. So if I go back, you can see that now our torus draws itself on and the animation repeats. If you want it to draw itself on and just stay on, you can set your max frames up a little higher and then you have this nice fluid animation. After that, all you would have to do to create the liquid effect is go into your render engine of choice. And since this is MoGraph, you can just texture it and it's nice and it'll work in all render engines. And you can just kind of, you know, put a liquid texture on it, do whatever you want. And you have this very cool animated noise. So that's the core effect. And this is the one that got requested by a commenter on the channel. Um, but I am going to go into another use case and kind of show you some more in-depth features if you want to stick around. To go into another example, I'm going to delete the torus and replace it with a sphere. I'm going to bring our segments, just like on the last one, up to 128. And I'm going to add to it a displacer. I held shift there to make the displacer a child of the sphere automatically. I'm gonna add our noise texture and go into it just like last time. At the moment, you can see this is very uh, pixelated and 
uh, just kind of definitely suboptimal. So I'm going to drop our sphere by holding Alt here into a subdivision surface. Now you can see we kind of have this microbial effect going on. And just like in our last one, obviously this can be animated and made into something much more lively. Very nice effect. I'm going to play around with some of the noise effects here. I'm going to come up to a Luca, change my octaves to around 20, change my, glo change my global scale around a good bit, and bring down the brightness some, maybe bring up the low clip, bring the high clip down. You get some of these very interesting effects. So there's a lot that you can do, and the parameters all push these things in very different directions. And obviously this, since we set our animation speed already, is animated as well. You can do the same thing with something like a Voronoi, give you this kind of geometric, hexagonal, very lively, organic looking mesh ball. And if you texture these, you can really get some crazy, crazy effects with high quality textures. You can do macro shots. It's really just a unique effect that you can take and do many, many things with. I'm going to do one more example, so I'm going to delete these. I'm going to bring in a plane and add our little hierarchy of things here. Now when you put noise on a plane, first of all, we don't have very many segments here, so it's not very detailed. I'm going to go ahead and take these up to 200 and you'll see that we instantly have a pretty interesting little ground plane here. I'm going to go into the displacer and bring our noise scale way up, animate it with a speed of 1, and you can see we kind of have this very simple little water texture animation going on. It's very simple like I said, so if we come into our noise and start playing with what kind of noise we have, we can probably get something that's a little more lively. This fire texture is very cool for a rippling ground kind of effect. And the displaced turbulence here is looking really good as like a simple water kind of effect. So there's a basic introduction to using noise displacement in Cinema 4D. This effect can be used very simply or get pretty in-depth pretty fast. So if you want me to do a more advanced tutorial, I'd be happy to do so. And you can just request it in the comments below. This is some very cool stuff that's very easy to play around with yourself. And so I'd be curious to see what you build from it. You can tag me on Instagram at jbrash4d. But until then, thank you for watching the video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And thank you very much.